Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today we'll be discussing the history of the Black Lake, as well as one of its most mysterious and infamous inhabitants, the giant squid. The Black Lake, otherwise known as the Great Lake, is a large body of fresh water that sits landlocked upon the grounds of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, just south of the school's castle. Its waters can be seen directly from the castle, as it is located below the school itself. For those of you who are familiar with the other wilderness areas that surround Hogwarts Castle, such as the Forbidden Forest, it is rather well known that the school's grounds offer a home to many magical beasts and creatures. Acting as more than just the castle's plumbing receptacle, the Black Lake is no exception, granting shelter to a large number of inhabitants, including a village of merpeople, an abundance of vicious little grindelows, and of course, the legendary giant squid. Measuring about a half of a mile in diameter, it's presumed that the Black Lake has always been there, at least since the founding of Hogwarts in the 10th century by Godric Gryffindor, Rowena Ravenclaw, Helga Hufflepuff, and Salazar Slytherin. However, it's entirely possible that the Black Lake was actually created by one or more of these four founding witches and wizards. As I imagine that alongside the construction of the castle, the founders would have also taken the grounds into serious consideration. This seems especially logical when one considers just how little the landscape of the Black Lake has changed over the centuries, for natural landmarks such as this typically ebb and flow with the ever-changing landscape and weather patterns of its environment. But not the Black Lake, and with such little change, it seems quite likely that the founders may have had a hand in leveraging their magical talents and abilities in order to create the expansive freshwater lake. Of course, there's Helga Hufflepuff's expertise in herbology and earth magic, which very well could have played a pivotal role in crafting the lake itself. Then there's the fact that the Black Lake has become a safe haven for so many magical creatures. Perhaps the founders wished to create an environment within nature in which beasts who are magical could live peacefully alongside the Wizarding School of Hogwarts, as well as close to the magical settlement of Hogsmeade. Providing underwater creatures like Grindelows and Selkies a place to live away from the Muggle world would have prevented them from being spotted, or possibly even hunted, by people. Beyond its allure of hosting magical creatures, the Black Lake also seemed to hold significant importance within the Wizarding world. It's believed that certain historical records indicate that ancient wizards performed rituals and ceremonies near its shores, harnessing the lake's magical properties. Some believe that these rituals were tied to divination, potion making, and even complex spells that drew upon the lake's unique energies. By the time Harry Potter attended Hogwarts, the Black Lake had become integral to some of the school's most well-known traditions, the first of which pertained to the arrival of new students. Upon the arrival of the Hogwarts Express each year, the first years were unloaded at Hogsmeade Station and led to the edge of the Black Lake. Here, a Hogwarts faculty member would load four students at a time into the small boats to journey across the lake towards the school's castle. This was how the upper-class students were able to arrive at the castle first, by Thestral, and get settled into the Great Hall before the first years arrived to be sorted into their houses. The Black Lake then played a part in the graduating traditions of the seventh-year students, who would leave Hogwarts for the last time by sailing back across the waters at the end of their final year. But perhaps the most intriguing aspect of the lake is yet to come. Sometime over the course of the past 800 years, a giant squid had also come to call the Black Lake its home. Despite its immense size, little is known about this enormous water creature, leaving us to ponder its origins, magical abilities, and, to a greater extent, its role within the wizarding world. Which leads us to the question of, was the squid always in the lake? Was it put there by the founders when they created the lake itself? If this was the case, presumably the squid would have been viewed by the founders as a protector of the Black Lake, and by extension, Hogwarts. This would suggest that the squid is a sort of lake guardian, potentially protecting its magical secrets, which I suppose is a valid theory. But what if the Hogwarts founders weren't the ones responsible for bringing, creating, or conjuring the giant squid to the Black Lake? How did it get there, and how long has it been there? 
While there aren't any confirmed first sightings of the mysterious giant squid, we do know that it has called the depths of the Black Lake its home since as early as the 1990s. But if the giant squid arrived in the Great Lake between the 1100s and the 1900s, how did it get there? Well, you may recall the arrival of the students from Durmstrang Institute during the Triwizard Tournament in 1994. A boat carrying the Durmstrang students appeared upon the Black Lake from the depths of its waters. But the Institute is located in Northern Europe, on the continent thousands of miles away from the waters of the Great Lake in the Scottish Highlands. Not only that, but the lake is, well, a lake, with no known access points to other bodies of water. Therefore, it stands to reason that within the lake itself is a magical portal or access point that joins the depths of the Black Lake with other bodies of water around the world. This could account for how the giant squid ended up there. Assuming that the giant squid was able to magically teleport itself to the waters of the Black Lake, then we must also consider the abilities of the creature itself. Is it magic, or did it simply stumble upon a portal that whisked it away to the Black Lake? Indeed, there are a few reasons why I believe the giant squid is magical in nature and might possess a high level of sentience, perhaps even a connection to ancient magical energies within the lake. For one, the giant squid has the ability to survive in the fresh water of the Black Lake. In the Muggle world, non-magical squids are only able to survive in salt water, so without magic, the giant squid would not survive living in a freshwater lake like this. It would also appear that the Black Lake's giant squid has demonstrated more intelligence than any giant squid known within the Muggle world. For example, it has purposefully helped to push students, like Dennis Creevy, back into his boat after he fell out while crossing the waters at the beginning of the 1994 school year, alongside his fellow first years. The squid has also been known to allow students to tickle its tentacles, as Harry and Ron see Fred, George and Lee Jordan do in passing at the end of one school year, showing that it has the sentience to know that the three boys mean it no harm. They are interacting with it in a way that suggests it understands it's playing with them. This behavior also supports the idea that the giant squid is, at least somewhat, domesticated, and not a dangerous or vicious wild animal as giant squids in the muggle world are believed to be. While the majority of these theories remain speculative, they certainly do add to the allure of the giant squid's mystique and align with what we know of the history of the Black Lake. Which brings us to the conclusion of the captivating history of the Black Lake and its enigmatic giant squid. From its mysterious origins alongside the founding of Hogwarts to the legends and theories that surround it, the Black Lake and its giant squid remain true marvels of the wizarding world. And with that, we've come to the end of today's video. What did you think? Did I miss anything important regarding the history of the Black Lake? Do you agree that the giant squid must be magic and sentient? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.